Hey guys, and welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be another Cooking with Natalie video. We are going to be making my lupini bean seitan. This is by far my most popular recipe, but today we're gonna to be doing a few variations. We're gonna turn them into nuggets. I'm gonna show you how easy and simple that is going to be. I'm also going to be, you know, doing a different kind of recipe than what you see on the website. So I'm going to list the recipe as it is on this video right in the description box below. So make sure to check it out. And if you want to check out the original recipe, that will be linked as well. So we're going to start off by mixing the dry ingredients. And here I have vital wheat gluten, and we're going to need just 120 grams of that. So I'm just gonna weigh that out. And I love getting my vital wheat gluten from Amazon. I like buying these things in bulk because then that way they last me a long, long time. Same with my nutritional yeast. So we're going to be using 20 grams of nutritional yeast, which is about a quarter cup. And my original recipe does have poultry seasoning, but I'm gonna switch it out because, hey, <laughs> We're in quarantine and I'm trying to not go to the grocery store, so I am going to switch it up a little bit and I'm going to use this barbecue rub and I'm going to use about half a tablespoon. I don't wanna to put too much because it already has a lot of salt in there, so we're omitting the salt from this recipe. All right, and we're just gonna give that a stir. So you want all the ingredients to be nice and incorporate it together. Once we have all of our dry ingredients mixed together, we're going to work on our wet ingredients. And for our wet ingredients, we're going to need about six ounces of water. You're gonna see how simple this recipe is. It takes me no time to make. So once you figure out how easy it is to make at home seitan, you're gonna wanna do it all the time. So I'm using lupini beans and I'm using them from the brand called Brahmi. What I like about these is that they are pickled lupini beans, so the carb intake is a lot less than what it usually is, and they have a decent amount of protein. They have seven grams of protein per serving, so that's pretty cool. If you can't find lupini beans, you can use whatever bean you like. Just have in mind the macronutrients will change. It'll be a little bit less protein and a little bit higher in carb. But I like shopping for all these ingredients on Amazon, so I'll link it in the description box below, and that way you guys don't have to get out to the grocery stores, because that is madness right now. So we're gonna throw those in there, and all we're gonna do is create like a hummus consistency. So if you don't have a high speed blender, that's okay. It's gonna be all blended up. As long as it's all kind of like in that hummus consistency, you'll be good. Side note, don't try to buy these in their dry form and try to use them for this recipe. Honestly, I had a few of you already try it out and they told me it's a 10 day process. So I'm going for convenience. So if you can't find these, just use cannellini beans, white beans, black beans. It'll change the flavor just so slightly, but you'll get the same result. So as you can see here, I have a nice hummus consistency and we are going to pour it. Now you want to fold it in and we want to work fast because we don't want to over mix the vital wheat gluten. The more you over mix the vital wheat gluten, the harder and stickier it will get. So once I have the majority of it kind of covered in there, we're gonna use our hands, so make sure you have clean hands. And we are just going to knead it really quickly just to get it all incorporated in there. And I'm not trying to get every single bit of dry flour but we wanna get most of it. So, there you have it, a dough. That's how quick, don't continue over mixing it. Some areas are still a little bit dry, but that's okay, because that's what's gonna give us like that nice nugget consistency. So, once we have that mixture all set up, I'm gonna bring over a pan. And again, I don't wanna go to the grocery store. Normally, I would have aluminum foil, 
but since we don't have aluminum foil in the house right now because I ran out, I'm gonna use parchment paper and that will work perfect. You want a deep dish and what we're going to do now is kind of tear out the dough with our hands. You're just gonna toss it in there. So I'm not looking for even chunks. Just make sure they're tiny enough so they bake the whole way through. Just continue tearing them like so. This whole recipe will be good for four servings. So if you want to double it up, you can do that and that way you'll have eight servings for the week, which is what I normally do. So we're going to create these little nugget pieces. So once you have all your nugget pieces, just evenly distribute in the pan. We are going to lightly use nonstick cooking spray and just spritz it just a little bit. So if you have aluminum foil, make sure to use that instead. But since I don't have any, I am just going to cover it with the same parchment paper. Put a little weight in there so it keeps the parchment paper in place. And then what I'm going to do is pop in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. Then we're going to uncover it and continue baking for 20 more minutes uncovered. Alright guys, I just plated it up all nicely and I'm so excited. I ended up adding a little bit of barbecue sauce that I had left over in the fridge from Trader Joe's, but feel free to cover with whatever sauce you like. You could do buffalo sauce or another barbecue sauce or even do like a ranch dip. You can't go wrong with this recipe. It's going to be absolutely amazing and it's gonna be a staple in your household. Now, since this recipe has been on my website for a while, I am going to answer a few of the questions that I usually get asked. So, vital wheat gluten. Vital wheat gluten is the protein found in the wheat berry. It's what makes this recipe so amazing, high in protein, because it's just straight protein, almost like little to no carbs at all. And, it also is what gives this recipe its unique meaty texture. So this is a non-negotiable. You cannot substitute this in this recipe. Basically, seitan is nothing without the Vita Wheat Glue. And while this was baking in the oven, I did make sure to be constantly shaking it around and moving it around so everything was nicely and evenly cooked throughout. You can store it in the fridge for about two weeks and put it in the freezer in an airtight container for about a month or so. And whenever you wanna heat it up, you can heat it up in the microwave, on a pan, or even in your air fryer. Doing it in the air fryer is one of my favorite ways to have it because it gets all nice and crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. It's my absolute favorite way of having it. Now the moment of truth, I have this pretty much every single day, so I know what it tastes like, but I know you guys like the taste test. It's so good, so, so good. So I know a lot of you have already tried my lupini bean seitan recipe. Let me know if you're excited to try this variation out. If you enjoy this video and these type of recipe videos, make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new here. Stay safe during this time, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.